I can't rely on anybody else to quote unquote fix me. And I'm going to tell you the exact same thing. No matter where you are in your life, you are the only one that can fix it because no one's coming to save you. There's not going to be someone that's going to come and say, hey, you need to wake up. Today, we're going to be talking about how to turn your life around and make something great from the life that you're living. And, um, you know, I want to tell you a story just to kind of put you into the mood. Uh, well, let's go back about 11 years ago. So about 11 years ago, actually, yeah, just at 11 years ago right now, um, I lived in Fort Lauderdale. This is in 2010. And I went from at the beginning of 2010, having an amazing business that was crushing it. And as a young kid, I was, you know, 23, 24 years old at the time, uh, 25 years old. And I was on top of the world. I had a bunch of money in my bank account. I was doing really well. And I put all of my money that I had in my bank account back into my business and it failed miserably. And I mean, like, it was like a plane crash. It went from like, you know, like everything was amazing. I was on this rocket ship that's doing so amazing. And then it crashed way faster than I actually even took off in the first place. I almost lost my car. I was five months behind on my car payment. I failed my business. There was you know, I, I was burnt out from it. I wasn't going back into it. Didn't want to run it anymore. And, you know, if you've heard the story, I lived off of pasta for two months. I don't know how the hell I did it. Thank God I was given the genes to be able to live off of Walmart pasta for two freaking months. But that was all that I ate for the two months. I ate, you know, it was 88 cents for a box of pasta at Walmart. It was $1.88 for the pasta sauce that I had. And I lived off of that for two months. And um, I remember I was going through all of this ended up leaving the business, you know, started working with another company and really just started working with the company just to make money and get myself back on my feet and went through some pretty terrible things in my life. A lot of shit happened at the time. And I remember I was sitting in my bathroom at a in Tampa, Florida in a two bedroom apartment. I rented a room from a couple that I met, that I met on Craigslist and they had their room up for rent. And I remember sitting there and I, I had you know, no money. I lost my successful business. My identity was attached to this successful business. So I thought I was a failure. I'd gone through a terrible breakup and all of these things. I remember sitting in my bathroom. It was like this coming to God moment where I was like, this is terrible. Like I, I see at this point why people kill themselves. Like, and I didn't want to kill myself. I wasn't in that moment, but I was like, I see, like, I see how people feel when they're at this moment. And I feel like there's almost no way out of it. It felt like I, I had fallen into a hole and then kept digging and digging and digging for the past eight months. And I remember thinking to myself, this moment came in and I was like, I am the only one that can fix this. That's it. I am the only one that can fix this. There is no one else. That, no one's going to come and save me. No one's going to come and make me start having success or make me go to the gym or make me work on myself or make me read a book or make me start meditating or make me start journaling. I am the only one that can fix this. I can't rely on anybody else to quote unquote fix me. And I'm going to tell you the exact same thing, no matter where you are in your life, whether it's good, whether it's pretty good, whether it's not great, whether it's terrible, you are the only one that can fix it. You can't blame anybody else. You can't say it's anybody else's fault. You can't try to blame outside circumstance anymore. You are the only one that can fix it. And I remember sitting there and I remember thinking to myself, I'm the only one that can fix this. I am going to figure out a way to make my life great. I'm not going to, I, there's no way that I'm going to die having not done something amazing with my life. I'm going to have to pick myself up and start working and put myself back together piece by piece by piece by piece. And you fast forward now 11 years and now I've gotten to the point where I can see that moment was a huge moment in my life. And it was the moment where it was like, I have come to realize it is up to me. I can't blame anybody else. I can't blame my mom. I can't blame the government. I can't blame my ex business that I was working with. I can't blame the market. I can't blame the government. Can't blame the president. Can't blame anybody else. I have to blame myself. And I fast forward 11 years and it's like, it worked. Like it actually worked. It literally worked because people can see, you know, followers that I have online and, you know, a hundred million downloads of a podcast and the business that we've built and all of those things. And they can look and be like, well, that, it, that must be nice. It must be easy. Good. I, I wish that I would have had it handed to me. I'll say this two things. Number one, 
none of it was easy. And number two, none of it actually matters in the first place. Like the amount of people that follow me online, the amount of money in a bank account, the amount of a business that does something, none of those things actually truly matters. What matters is the way that I view myself in the actions that I take each day. And it took more than anything else, full belief in myself and pushing through. And so I want to talk to you no matter where you are in your life and use that story to hopefully inspire you to do something amazing with yourself as well. No matter where you are in your life, this is my favorite way to look at, at life. I like to look at life, I've heard Joe Rogan talk about it, as if life is just a movie. Like it's just this movie, and I imagine that there's just spectators watching the life of Rob Dial. And I want you to imagine that there's spectators watching the life of your name. What does the life of your name look like? The idea that he says, that I've heard Joe Rogan say, is to be the hero of your own story. When you're in that moment where things are hard, when things are not working out, you have to decide that I'm gonna be the hero of my own story. No one's gonna come in and save me. There's no Superman or Iron Man coming in to save me and Marvel Comics to come in and make my life amazing. In this movie, I'm the only character that people are following. And you have to imagine that your life is a movie right now because whether it's good and you want to make it even better, that's inspiring. Whether it's pretty good, and things are okay, but you wanna make it even better, that's inspiring. Whether it's terrible and things are just in shambles, but you know you wanna make it better, you have to decide to be the person to do it. You are the hero of this story. And I always think about the movie that, that's just so inspiring to so many people that really hits home is the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, where you see Will Smith's character and he's inside of the, the, the bathroom in the bus station with his son. And it's like, you see somebody hit rock bottom and you see him sleeping on the bathroom of a bus station with his son and he's got nowhere to go. He's got nothing to do. And he decides at that moment, he's crying and it's a super emotional part of the movie of I'm going to do this. There's no one else that's gonna help me succeed. I have to be the person that's succeeding. But what's gonna make it easier? Knowing that no one's gonna come and save you is imagine that there's a ton of people watching you. Imagine there's people watching everything that you're doing throughout each day. I asked this on a Zoom call I was on yesterday. There's about 100 people that were there and I said, hey, would you do something different with the past, you know, every week I'm on the Zoom call and I said, hey, would you have done different stuff if I was following you around every single day last week? And every single person's like, yes, absolutely. If I was following you around and I was trying to help you build your business and I'm watching you in every single action, would you have done some things differently last week? Everyone's like, yes. I'm like, why does it matter if I'm there or not? Why does it matter if I'm watching? Because you know who is watching? The most important person, you. And the actions that you take will either build your confidence that you can do this or strip away your confidence. You know, if you have your alarm go off at 6 a.m. and you hit the snooze button, and you hit the snooze button, and you hit the snooze button, you are losing confidence in yourself. Because when you were fully conscious and awake the night before, you made a decision that you were gonna wake up at 6 a.m. But you decided to break a contract with yourself, a little tiny mini contract. When you decide I'm gonna work out for you know, 45 minutes today and you don't show up, or you go to the gym and you only work out for 20 minutes, you have broken a mini contract with yourself. When you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create my first podcast episode and you've been delaying it for months and months and months and months, you are breaking mini contracts with yourself. So you have to understand that it doesn't matter if I'm watching, it doesn't matter if anybody else is watching. What matters is that you are constantly watching. But if it makes you feel a little bit better, imagine that there's a, a theater of 100 people watching every single thing that you do. Yes, everything, even the weird things that you do. They're watching it and they're paying attention and they want you. They just want this story to be good. They want to feel good when they move, leave the movie theater. They want to feel moved to tears about Yes, they did it. I'm so happy for them. I'm so glad that they ended up taking their life from where it was and creating something that is so amazing. Imagine that there's a, a room full of people that are rooting for you. They want to see you win. They're watching every single move. You know, oh man, they, they said that they were gonna wake up at 6 a.m. They woke up at 6 a.m. They said that they were gonna do the workout. They did their workout. Look at them. They're starting to put all the pieces together. They're starting to put, pick themselves out of the shambles of their life. They're like the phoenix. They're coming back from the, the fiery, you know, crash that they've created of their life. They're, they're coming up like a phoenix. So it's the question is, are you going to wake up when your alarm goes off? Are you going to go to the gym or are you going to stay scrolling on Instagram? Are you going to uh, watch Netflix or are you going to put the extra two hours that you need to into your business after putting the kids down? 
do it for them. Do it for the kids, knowing that they're eventually going to watch this movie. They're going to be, they're participants in this movie, and they're going to see the ending of this movie at some point in time. The question is, is it a movie that your children are going to watch and they're going to be proud of seeing their parent do that? What are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and just sit back and just allow life to happen to you and blame everybody else and blame external circumstances and act like, yeah, woe is me. I'm a victim. The world is happening to me. All of this stuff. Are you going to go, you know what? Everything that's happening is happening for me. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to work. I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to work. I'm going to dust off myself every single day and I'm going to work towards what it is that I want. Because no one's coming to save you. There's not going to be someone that's going to come and say, hey, you need to wake up. No one's going to make you read that book. No one's going to make you invest into that course. No one's going to make you uh, go to that conference to learn about how to start that new business. No one's coming to save you and no one will ever come to save you. But you have an entire audience of people who are rooting you on, who want to see you do well with your life. They want you to be the hero of your own story. And you're at that breaking point right now where it's like, I either go left or I go right. Going left is going to take me and it's going to be the exact same thing I've been doing my entire life. The same fears, the same limiting beliefs, the same judgments of myself, the same blaming other people, the same making excuses in everything that I do. You could go left or you could go right. And that's taking full ownership for yourself, taking full ownership for your life, deciding that you will no longer blame external circumstances for anything, and you're gonna become the CEO of your life. If you've been listening to me long enough, I always talk with the phrase, the CEO of your life. It was a, a, a coming to God moment that my very first mentor had, to, had with me. And in its simplest terms, I was making excuses. I wasn't showing up on time to calls. I wasn't hitting my goals. I wasn't hitting my projections. And I was making all of these excuses. I'm like, I was a professional, excuse maker. And I was really damn good at it. Enough that I believe myself all of the time. Excuses, why I'm not getting what it is that I want and why my life isn't what I want it to be. And he had a coming to God moment with me and he said, Rob, I got a question for you. If a business fails, whose fault is it? And I said, it's the CEO's fault. He said, if a business succeeds, whose fault is it? And I said, I guess it's the CEO's fault. He said, okay, if you get to the end of your life and you look back at your life and you're like, that was a failure. I didn't do anything that I wanted to do. It wasn't even close to the life that I could build for myself. And I failed. And you're sitting there on your deathbed and you're feeling those feelings. Whose fault is that? I was like, that's my fault. And he said, okay, but if you get to the end of your life and you're surrounded by a bunch of people that love you and you're looking at your life and thinking of how amazing you made it and it was, it, it, it was a full success in every single aspect of the, of the word, whose fault is it? And I said, that would be my fault. And he said, exactly. So the problem is, is you're not living your life as if you're the CEO of your, of your life. You're not living your life as, a, as if the CEO. You have no one else to blame. There is no one else that's going to come and save you. You have to take full control and full acceptance for every single thing that you do. CEO of your life means that if it's a success or if it's a failure, you take full blame for every single thing that you do. That is how you become the hero of your own story. Because ultimately, the thing that you have to realize, I say it all the time, no one's going to come and save you, but the choice is yours. And whatever you choose is fine. But the question is, is it what you actually truly deep down inside want? Or is it just what you're used to? If you want to stay in bed, stay in bed, dude. If you want to go on Instagram and waste two hours a day on Instagram, then waste two hours a day on Instagram. If you want to lay in your bed all weekend and all evening, every evening, and just watch Netflix, do it. But if you want to create greatness in your life, if you want to create something amazing, if you want to create something inspiring, if you want to look back in your deathbed and think to yourself, holy sh look at what I've created, you have to be the hero of your own story. You have to step up. You have to learn to stop blaming other people. And you've got to decide to step into what it is that you truly can be. Because the time is now. You can either choose to go left, where it is the same thing that you've been getting forever, and you're going to continue to get the same thing forever until you make a change, or you can go right. And that right is to become the CEO of your life, to become the hero of your own story, to imagine there's people watching you at all points in time, and they're rooting for you. They want you to do well. They want you to succeed. They're watching every single mo moment and they're saying, oh man, they're doing what they said they were going to, oh, they, they fell a little bit there, but they got themselves back up and they kept going. And so you've got to decide, are you going to be the hero of your own story? Or are you going to be the victim of external circumstances? The choice is yours. I just hope that you choose the right thing for you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. We have all of the excuses. We're all so busy. Oh, I don't have enough time. To say that you don't have time, but you have a Netflix subscription, then you watch it, that's bullshit. You're lying to yourself.